With Perry, when we assessed him, he was one of the best athletes in the class. But he also had some issues with the knee. And we felt that if he didn't change things, that he wasn't going to survive. When I got drafted, I was at my high. And slowly but surely, it got real low. In this high stakes game of, uh, of professional sports now, you can't leave this stuff to chance. Just another day. Yeah. I, I want to be one of the greats. I want to be one of the ones that's, you know, out there averaging 20 plus points a game. People have to put their best defender on me. You know, that's the type of challenge I want to take on. I've been out here um, since April. I had a hip injury early November of last year. I was out the rest of the season and I've just been here just strengthening my hip like I was before, you know, being able to jump you know, higher than ever, being able to sprint faster, I get my body right for this season, and so far it's been great, you know. Using whatever technologies we can borrow from medicine, from biomechanics, to get insight into how these athletes work, we can do a better job of caring for athletes. We can train athletes better and smarter if we know more about those athletes, if we under understand their systems in a more granular way. At this point, we have surely more data on athlete movement than anybody's ever had in the world. I have no doubt about that. If we collect enough data on the athlete, and we can generally do that over a course of a couple hours, and we take all those big pieces of data that jump out at us and we put them on a table, they all reassemble into this, this perfect puzzle. A guy like Perry Jones, we were able to assess him before he played a single minute in the NBA. What we do is we get him in our facility and we'll spend a couple hours taking him through high velocity ballistic movements. And once we collect all this data, thousands of different data points, uh, we compare it to all of our normative data in our database. So we can compare Perry to all his NBA positional peers that allow us to see how Perry matches up against other, other positional peers before he's ever played against them. It allows us to compare Perry to players that went to different schools that are, that are maybe draft class similar to him. The Oklahoma City Thunder select Perry Jones III from Baylor University. Draft night was very, very emotional. You know, despite I didn't go, you know, top 10 or whatever like I was supposed to, uh, just being able to experience something like that with my, with my loved ones was really, was really special to me. You know, it started off not so great, you know, not playing and things like that. <laughs> you know, playing the last couple of minutes or couple of seconds of a game, you know, you're only playing 30 seconds at the end of a game. Then people start reading the things and you start reading the things like your stats and stuff like that. And you see that, you know, your stats are really low. It's because, you know, you clocked in the game, you know, the last 20 seconds when you're up by 25 or something like that. It's definitely not a confidence builder. You know, you got to go out there and, you know, guard Carmelo Anthony. He's comfortable out there. You're not. And then all of a sudden, I'm not playing at all no more. I'm, I'm waiting two weeks to play a game. It's more like my first game in the NBA again. It's more like, uh, you know, I feel like a rookie all over. I'm nervous. That's why people say, I guess I'm a bust, you know. I was a Oklahoma City bust and things like that. But he also had some mechanical pathologies. He had movement problems that were in place that clearly were over overloading that knee. And so before the kids played a single minute, we're worried about him. He comes from a really, really uh, challenging background. Uh, but despite that, he still, he still shines, you know, he still sparkles. I had a stint where um, we didn't have anybody on the team healthy. Russell was out, Kevin was out, Mitch Begay was out, and then uh, the next game, the next day, we had to play the Clippers. More assertive. O of seven for J.J. Reddick. Jones got it! At the next dead ball, and Adams, Jones, three, book it! He just let out a holler too. I had 32 points. Not gonna lie to you, uh, it was a big relief off my shoulders. Uh, it just let me know 
and it basically put a step that I could actually play in this league and me actually contributing and me actually, you know, scoring and me actually getting assists and rebounds and to actually create something for the rest of the team. It felt good. A couple games into it, I got hurt in Toronto. Um, I banged knees with, uh, with somebody. Uh, I was out for a couple weeks. Then uh, on my return, you know, everybody was back before I was fully healthy. Things went back to the way it was before, you know. You may play five minutes, you may not. Patience is the key. Hey, what's good? How you doing? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, man. Well, basically, it's my last like week in the U.S. So um, they wanted to come out here. It's my circle. Oh, well, I can't even tell you how we met. The dude would dunk on me every practice. <laughs> so I'm thinking he don't like me or something, right? <laughs> After a practice, I didn't have a ride home. So I was like, PJ, you can give me a ride. I went to his house that day. I just kicked it with him for a little bit. I drank some of the best Kool-Aid I ever had in my life. <laughs> Can't really explain how we just became best friends, but that's it. Just happened. It just happened out of nowhere. And then our parents all met and stuff, and they still like they talk to each other without us being around. We all family to each other. You know, it's not just me and him. It's it's our families. I seen his highlights on uh, YouTube, and I'm trying to see why is my dude not playing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like he's putting the ball in the hole, right? <laughs> Like, right. the dude had 36, 17, 27. I mean, what else you want him to do? Yeah. When you told me the teams that was looking at him in the NBA, like Dallas and uh, the Pelicans, I mean, that gave me kind of high hopes he'll stay here. But I, I thought about Rush, I was like, man, that's pretty far, man. <laughs> oh no, I gotta give him a passport and everything. I'm trying to hit a game. But I'm gonna still be watching the games because I got that fire stick. Boom. Hey, what's up, man? You say what's up? You gonna say what's up? <laughs> My cousin, who was uh, who's also my best friend, basically the middle of the season, uh, I got a phone call that he was in the hospital. He actually has uh, congestive heart failure, so after every practice. Uh, I would drive to Dallas, go to the hospital um, to go see him, uh, and then be back in the morning for practice. The doctor told him that, you know, he might not have long to live. And then I got a phone call from the Thunder's GM, and he said well, he's going to trade me to Boston. Um, went to Boston, um, and when I got to Boston, things started getting worse for my cousin. So when I was at Boston, I would leave a lot to go back to Dallas just to spend time with him and see him and things like that. Because I knew when the season started, it was going to be a lot harder to come see him. Things were going pretty well. You know, I was shooting the ball well. I was playing well. Everything was going pretty well. Um, I get back from Dallas uh, from seeing my cousin, and uh, he was in ICU at the time. He was doing pretty bad. Um, as soon as I get home uh, to Boston, um, my auntie called me and told me my cousin um, that um, she had to pull the plug. When that happened, I lost it. That's um, that's somebody I love, you know, more than a brother. I wasn't functioning in practice. I was doing terrible. I, I wasn't there mentally. And then a couple of weeks later, I got waived. Then uh, I got picked up by the energy. And then I got hurt right away. Everything just happened so quick, so fast, at the worst time possible. And I didn't know how to handle it. 
I mean, I still text him to this day. I still send him Snapchats, even though I know he's not going to answer. best athletes in the class but he also had some movement problems that were in place he had a hip injury that was pretty significant just when he started getting a lot of playing time you know came he started getting some starts and he was he was performing really well and then he had this, this significant injury how are our performance metrics compared to uh, when we had him out before once upon a time when we saw Perry ages ago he was touching 11.5 from a standing vert today he touched 11 six and a half so an inch and a half a half up uh, look great on the hip mobility side, the hammies are incredibly tight. Um, you know, high 60s, low 70s. So he's, you know, he's definitely, definitely struggling a little bit there. You know, for a guy who's just coming off injury, coming out of the box looks pretty damn good, right? Jumping already better than most guys in the NBA at this point. Yeah, knee flexion is probably right about you know, NBA average or professional basketball average. Mm, looks pretty good for PJ, huh? And now as we assess him, uh, his performance metrics look really good. Like they've actually gone up from where he was. Uh, and they were good when he came in, and uh, his knee and his hip are doing well. You know, if a guy has a better system than another guy, we watch it almost always outcompete that other system. You know, he's, he's just took a job uh, in, uh, in Moscow. Um, but I would predict he's gonna go over there, he's gonna play really well, and if he's healthy, which we think he will be, um, he's gonna have opportunities to come back in the league because his physical system um, matches up really well against guys that are in the league right now. So I, I think this is a guy that's going to have a pretty nice career in front of him. It's going uh, to be kind of sad, you know. Never been this far away from my loved ones and family members, but uh, at the same time, it's a new journey. Ultimate goal is to be back in the United States playing in the NBA. You know, I just wanted to be like that one that was resilient and, you know, fall back to not only be in the league, but to have an impact, you know, to be somebody on the team that's their go-to guy. Everybody has problems. Everybody goes through things. It's how you take the hardships. It can either defeat you or it can make you stronger. It definitely was winning the battle. But now I'm definitely getting over that hump. <laughs>